So we need to put more of those moments together. First tap, Duke putting them together. The miseducation of Trajan Langdon. Kid is like silk. 19 points in the first half. Then off the steal by Elton Brand. He feeds Langdon. Coach K said our kids played with intensity, played the whole way like it was a four-point game. Davidson, though, hung around for a while. Off the missed shot, the loose ball, it will eventually come out to Landry. Kozmowski, Kozmowski, down low, two of his 10 points. Davidson down nine, partly because Duke committed 21 turnovers, prompting William Avery to say, we're a veteran team, we need to play like one. Still first half, they started to. Avery, grand larceny. Duke calls 25 turnovers. Avery, 10 points, eight assists, four steals. Second half, Langdon. I'm not a play, I just crush a lot. All ACC first team the last two years. Langdon, 27 points. Duke wins it 94 to 61. This was a 94th meeting between two of the original members of the Southern Conference in a series that goes back to 1909. Duke's 21 turnovers come after a season opening 19. Joked Coach K, we're looking to lead the league in something. But then again, the Blue Devils forced the Wildcats into a 33% shooting night. Number four, Michigan State at Oakland. First half. Michigan State up three. Mateen cleaves oh. alley -oop to Morris Peterson. Bra, y'all ain't got to bring it like that. Spartans shoot 58% from the field. Oakland stays close thanks to Brad Buddenborg. Money on the three. Grizzly shot 51%. Buddenborg again. Change. Buddenborg. Bank. Spartan coach Tom Izzo said, I knew they had guys who could shoot the lights out. Buddenborg 16 all in the first half. Late in the first half, Grizzlies turn it over. Cleaves to Charlie Bell. Bell had 22 in the half, 26 overall. At one time, he scored 8 of 13 Spartan baskets. Second half, Cleaves alley -oop to Peterson. Oh, they are bringing it like this. Seven assists for Cleaves, 381, six on the Spartans' all-time list. Behind that guy, Steve Smith, who has 453. And then Mateen, three, done. He had 21 points. Open coach Greg Campy said, we're not the number five team in the country. Those Televised nationally on the deuce. Claude back at... University of Houston, where he once wore that number. First half, four seconds left. Houston's G. Gervin, son of George, plays beat the clock successfully. Drexler pumped his team up by 10 at the half, 38-28. 48 seconds left in the game. Houston up only four. Chris Clack gives the ball to Ivan Wagner in the corner. Good look. He makes it. Texas down 70-69 with 44 seconds left. Cougars inbounding after a timeout. Jake Ballas gets the pass. Traveling. Drexler. Oh, this is what being a coach is all about, Claude. There's now 16 seconds left. Texas ball down one. Shot clock winding down. William Clay takes the three for the lead. Good look. No good. Clock gets the rebound. Fakes. Puts up the shot. No good. Chris Mim, the follow. No good. Bad scramble for the ball. G. Gervin pulls it down. Gets fouled with one tick left. And Drexler and Houston. Loving. As Houston beats Texas 71-69, a capacity crowd of 8,452 jammed Hoff Hines Pavilion to watch the second Drexler era get off to an auspicious start. Opening its road schedule at Penn, not a cupcake move by any stretch. Net coach John Calipari on hand to see Michael Jordan. No, not that Michael Jordan. Penn's Michael Jordan. Jordan with the steal, like the former Jordan, but the latter Jordan can't finish like the first Jordan that we saw. We're going the other way. Kenny Gregory now. The great spin move, and he finishes. We now have a tie ball game at 28 apiece. However, Jordan with another steal, and this time he lays it in, but the cameraman takes a beating. Jordan had 12. Quakers down three in the closing minutes. Matt Langle, he hits it. We're tied at 56, and they're going crazy in Philly. KU up 57-56. Jordan, the pull-up jumper, no good. His follow, oh, there's a lid on the rim for him. He missed 11 of 16 shots, did MJ. Kansas still up one. Jeff Boshi, huge jumper. Kansas up three. Ten seconds left. Last chance for Penn to tie the game. Jordan dribbling, passes up the shot. Jed Ryan deed up pretty well. Roy Williams tells Fran Dunphy, I'm not coming back here again. Well, I'm sure he didn't say that. Kansas wins a close one. Now, why in the world did the Jayhawks go... Police over that high-fitting vest there, but but trying to be stylish. Georgetown stylish as well. On the breakaway, and Burton getting loose for the nine-nothing run put Georgetown up six. Still in the first half, Georgia State down by eight. 
Willie Taylor rejected by Turk and Gresham. Kevin Morris going to coolly take it all the way right down the boulevard and lay it home. Morris had 16. Panthers down by four at the break. Lenny and Dikembe, not much else to do, so they're watching. Georgia State's Anton Reese, transfer out of Alabama, five of nine from behind the arc. He had 21, and Georgia State went up 60 to 57 over Georgetown. Lefty could smell number 700, but late in the second half, here come the Hoyas. Georgetown up five, Nat Burton, and one. 15 for Burton, Georgetown pulls it out, and Lefty, I think he pulled off the vest. 83-68, to 68, the final in this one. Hoyas outscored the Panthers 26-8 to 8 over the final 11 minutes. There's absolutely feeling it from outside. A.J. Guyton will spring loose in the corner. A.J., see the three, be the three. See it, be it. 11 in the first half for Guyton, and Luke Recker getting in on the act as well. Three of his 13 first half points. He had 20 on the night. IU 5 for 7 from downtown, but Bob Knight wants to get it inside. The timing was such, this pass being made, allowing him to post, get a second pass and score. Okay, post, one pass, and score. Michael Lewis, the good look to Len Washington, and then Lewis, who had four assists on the night, finds Guyton inside. Where's Norman Ankrum on defense when you need him? IU up by 14, and Indiana blows it out, 91 to 54. And even Knight was impressed. The Hoosiers were so good, he was left to remind his team during timeouts. Katie nice and calm early, early in the first half. Gonzaga's Owenton Hall steals the ball from Jerron Cornell and is looking for Matt Santangelo and Matt stroking. Bulldogs take a quick lead and Gene does not like that jacket. Perhaps wants one of Lefty's best. Into the first half, Tony Mayfield steals the ball from Axel Drench and he's going to take it. Little move, takes it all the way to the cup. A 13-1 run for the Boilers. They're up by 14 at the break. In the second half, Purdue by 10. Cameron Stevens finds it to Cornell. Looking inside, Cornell, who was hurt late last year. At a team high 29 points. He's regained his form from late in the season. The Boilermakers win it by a count of 83. 3 ranked Minutemen first half. Ron Artest misses the shot inside. Tyrone Grant, 20 points, a career high, 17 boards, a career high. Red Storm up by 12. So in the first half, Larry Kettner loses the ball on the break. Reggie Jesse, great pass to Marvis Thornton for two. St. John's up by eight at the half. Second half, UMass making a run. Kettner gets the jump hook in the lane. He had 13. UMass within four. St. John's alum Jason Williams. Come on, guys, let's go. And they respond. Freshman Eric Barkley drives. Artest had nine points, two right here. St. John's wins it by the final score of 73 to 69. Part of that game last year. First half action, look at the spot shadow there. Jason Capel setting the pick, frees up Adamola Okalaja, who slammed home the pass from Ed Cota. Carolina cruising by 11. More spot shadows here as we take a look at the great work by Carolina and the nice move. Good screen, Brad Frederick, it frees up Brendan Haywood. Thank you very much. Carolina up by 10. Second half, though, the dogs coming back. G.G. Smith, Tubby's kid, stroke it. More from the dogs. Smith off the screen. See the three. Be the three. 54 53. The lead is down to one. Two minutes left now. Dogs down by two. Rob Dryden. Don't you very know. Missed it. Botched it. Carolina still by two. And this is the way you ram it home. Big freshman Chris Lane jamming it. Carolina would cruise in with. For one against SMU on ESPN. First half, Stanford up early. Outside game clicking, Arthur Lee for three. Next trip down for Stanford, Chris Weems for three. Wide open looks, can't give Stanford that. Back-to-back -back trays, put Stanford up by nine. Mike Montgomery, however, still imploring his team. Still first half, Stanford up by 21. Tim Young finds Mark Matson high percentage. Matson had 10 points at the half. Late first half, Stanford keeping up with the passing game. Tim Young finds Peter Sauer. Stanford up 23, SMU coach Mike DeMent. Talking. Second half, Stanford up big. Young with the board. Arthur Lee transitioning. Chris Weems for three on the wing. Stanford up 51-23. SMU, you might say, lost in a Chelsea of Stanford points. Oh, uh, no. That guy, I guess they're starting the Secret Service up young these days. Well, no, where does he keep the Uzi? The Cardinal have won 25 of their last 27 at Maples Pavilion. 49-41 in the second half. William Fauntleroy. Listen. Here comes Fontenot. Oh, watch this, folks. Oh! 
That is sick. Oh, somebody got posterized. Fauntleroy scored the first 11 points of the second half, but Missouri was down just two with seconds remaining, and Brian Grauer with a chance for the win for Missouri, but no good. And Missouri loses on its own floor. First time Norn Stewart has lost a home November game in his... Have lots of new faces from UCLA. This is a young team with a talented freshman class, but there's a sophomore, Earl Watson, showing off a little bit. Steve Lavin up by three. More freshmen involved. Jerome Moiso. This guy's a monster inside. 16 points in the game for Moiso. Bruins up by eight at the break. Second half. Bruins showing off a little bit. Watson, the good pass. They are finding Matt Barnes. Watson have 15 points. UCLA would put the game away. Rico Hines to Jerron Rush. Rush led the Bruins with 19, and UCLA wins it by a count. And the Huskies trouble early. Jake Vosco had to leave after spraining his ankle. Jim could not turn to Ray Allen. Ray, of course, he got game. Rip Hamilton, he too got game. Stroking it. Hamilton, see the three, be the three. Hamilton, see it, be it. Hamilton, 22 at the half. UConn up 41 to 25, and you can't just shoot. You got to give it up too. Hamilton does. Finding Kevin Freeman for the dunk. Hamilton, 32 points, seven boards. A C taking on Miami, Ohio, and that man Wally Zerbiak early in the first half. Mike Ensminger finding Zerbiak. Red Hawks up by three late in the first half. Miami had stretched the lead to seven. Zerbiak had done it inside. Zerbiak doing it outside. 17 in the first half for the Miami Star. Miami up by seven. It's now down to one with Zerbiak one more time battling for the board. He had 12 of those on the night, and he puts it home in traffic. Miami by three. Tennessee had cut it to one. Isaiah Victor now working on the low block. Victor loses it, gets it back, finds C.J. Black, who lays it in, and Tennessee has the lead. On the next possession, you know who they're going to. Zerbiak working. Faith. Fire. Fill it. 34 points on the night for Zerbiak. Miami up by one. Now the Red Hawks trying to put Tennessee away. Jason Grunkemeyer stroking. Miami of Ohio much rejoicing in November 68 62. Their first win over the Vols in 50 years. Not this much fun at Wally's World since Clark Griswold took the family out there. 68 62, the final. The fans were chanting Wally, Wally. And why not? 14 of 23 from the floor, and his 12 boards were a game high, but it was defense that keyed this upset. On the run, Antonio Reen's dental is a stripped Ryan Fletcher to Melvin Levitt, short for Levitt Tate. Later in the first half, it's Levitt attempting the three. Nobody puts a body on Kenyon Martin. Kenyon Martin, what a wonderful player. Cincinnati led by four at the break. Second half, Bearcats defense strong. Lamar Odom. Very Rejected by Martin. Jim Herrick cannot be pleased. Bearcats on the boards. Steve Logan. No. Ryan Fletcher rebounds. Levitt. No. And guess who comes calling? Martin. Martin. 16 points, 16 rebounds. He is as good a defender as you will find in college basketball. 70 to 50. Will you? Monty in the second rank Cardinal. Hosting Steve Alford in Southwest Missouri State. First half, Peter Sauer feeds Mark Madsen down low. Madsen misses. Sauer comes up with the offensive board, kicks it out to Art Lee, who loses it, gets it back, and drains a three. Lee, five for seven from downtown in Stanford with 18 offensive boards. William Fottenroy tries to keep the game close. He makes the steal, goes coast to coast. A beautiful spin down low and hits the deck at Maples hard. He was okay, and he finished with 14. Still first half. Madsen gets the defensive rebound. The long outlet pass to Lee. Bill Raftery calls it a kiss. Two of his 17 points, Stanford up 31-18. Second half, okay, get quick. Tim Young, is he quick? Watch this down low. That's a quick move on the baseline. He looked like Hakeem Olajuwon. He only had seven, but he played well. Stanford cruises, 76-51. to The Cardinal hit 9 of 21 from three. Mark Madsen, 11 points and nine boards in just 20 minutes. With the win, Stanford joins St. John's, North Carolina, and Purdue in the semis of the preseason NIT in New York. The Cardinal will face the Red Storm next week, next Wednesday at Madison Square Garden. Fourth-ranked Michigan State and Temple, this was a great one. First half, Temple's Quincy Wadley, both first name and last name, end with a Y. Air ball. Andre Hudson, the long pass. Mateen Cleaves hammered and scored. Probably the best point guard in the nation. Michigan State led by 12. Second half, Temple comes cruising back. Lamont Barnes misses underneath. 
There's a scramble. Lynn Greer misses the follow before Mark Karchner finally scores, and Temple is within eight, 44-36, just under six minutes left. Cleves with a great one-on-one -on -one move, the spin, and he leaves Pepe Sanchez. We'll hear more from him in a minute. Cleves led all score with 17 points, and Michigan State's up. 30 seconds, Temple down by three. Wadley with the air ball, but Barnes grabs it, scores, and gets fouled. Barnes would miss the free throw. Temple still down by one, 59-58. Less than 10 seconds left. Temple down one. Rashid Brokenborough drives, misses the runner, but the ball goes out of bounds to Temple with 1.3 seconds left. Izzo said, oh, my, are you kidding me? On the inbounds play. Greer finds Sanchez underneath the basket. Whatever you do, don't foul him. They fouled him. Five-tenths of a second left. Izzo can't believe it. Five for five from the free throw line prior to this one. It's good. Sanchez ties it at 59 for your game winner. Watch the swan dive. Oh, <laughs> it's the game winner. 60 to 59, a great comeback for Temple. The 1500th win in school history. The sixth Division I program to reach that figure. Six up by six, Illinois' Corey Bradford misses the leaner. His follow denied. Illinois continues to crash the boards. Fess Hawkins eventually gets it in. Illinois had 14 offensive rebounds. Sergio McCain then with the pick. And here we go. McCain had 24 points, and it's a two-point game. Ten seconds left. Illinois ahead by three. St. Louis recovers the rebound off the foul shot, and eventually Ryan Luck to Feld tries a three to tie. Over the scoreboard. Illinois holds on to win 70-65. to The Billikens hit five three-pointers in the second.